Hey guys, I got a lot of y'all wanting to see uh, more information on these wind controllers for wind turbines. In other words, it's considered a diversion controller. Now look below the video. If you've got a cell phone, look right over there. There's like a little tiny button arrow thing that you can touch and it'll open up the information on the video and have the listing. So I'm going to try to put all the parts I have, all the parts I use, anything that might help you. You can go find them, look them over, see what it is. If you come up with a better idea, do so. Um, but let's get in here and I'm going to show you what I've got here. This is a charge controller for a wind turbine. In other words, a diversion controller. Now I'm going to show you what it does. As you'll see right here, this is an OPC, Olympic Power Controls, Universal. And I'm going to put a link down there to those through, uh, through Mason. And you can go get you some, numerous kinds, including that digital model there. And uh, they're really simple, really simple. Now, this one, we're going to use SSRs, so we have that tab removed in this one. It's it, really easy. The, the uh, paperwork will show you if you get one. Now, this one here, I will turn it out to raise the voltage. Now, you see that flicker? You see those flashing lights? You see that flickering right there? Now, we started at 13.99, and I'll increase this right here. And you watch that drop, that voltage drop. I'm putting a heavier load on it. And you see, it's running a full load. Now, once it gets down to near that full voltage, it'll start flickering again. And you can see that. So it's starting to do its release right now. You see that? So what it's doing is just shutting it on and off. Now, I'm gonna turn this off. I ain't got no point in dropping my battery that much. But, and you'll see it start to recover there. The point of this is, is a wind turbine has these power curves and, and they constantly change, constantly change. So if you've got a $500 controller, Midnight Classic or something, I don't care what you do with it. You'll never get it right. That's how you fix it. About $150 worth of parts does a better job. Now, over here, you've got your sensor wires for your voltage, tell your voltage. You've got your power wires, and I've just got this pushed in for your diversion so you're going to burn off the excess power it's nice and warm now above the voltage you set at now i set mine at about 14.5 for my wind turbines and i set my solar back in here to disconnect at about 14.25 so in other words my solar is already disconnecting before um my wind turbines peak out so my wind turbine controller is not activating against my solar power if you have one of those 400 amp controllers that do that big monster solenoid or even some ssrs and it just kicks on and your battery voltage drops like a rock well you're doing two things you're killing your batteries and you're destroying your solar panels because you're taking your solar panels at full load and like hitting them with a car starter you know not good now over here the way this works is really simple you have your wind turbine come in now depending on the rpms you will have something that's very tight real high frequency or very wide so if your turbine's just turning enough to create voltage those sine waves will be real far apart and as it gets faster they get more compressed okay that's just the way that the cycling works it will come into your rectifier your rectifier will then knock off basically the bottom half of those waves and produce a positive side now it's a little ripple but it's all on the positive side this is that pulse that really helps your battery bank so if you have a big battery bank just adding a three or four hundred watt turbine i'll put the link to some of them below just adding those can make your battery bank last up to three years longer and if you spent like me five grand for a battery bank kind of dumb not to put a 300 dollars turbine on it and plus the weather so um up here where you can see this is set up this is the way that the other controllers work. Voltage reaches the set voltage, kicks on a big relay, sucks it down to almost nothing. Down below 12.8, relay, re, the relay releases, and back up it goes. So you're just beating the hell out of your batteries. Now, the way this one works, the way this works, is it allows the charging of the batteries to reach a point, and then when it hits that point, it just literally burns off instead of allowing it to go into the battery it burns off the excess power and yes you can put that in a water heater uh, look below i'll put you some links to the hurricane ones they're really good um, you can have that going into anything now me personally i let it burn off in here because during the winter time it actually helps warm the shop i like it now 
over here you see my gauges and right now no wind you see my rectifier setup so i have power coming in goes through a set of fuses these are 60 amp fuses i produce a lot of power so i put in 60s and then down here i have the rectifier now i have a lot of people tell me if your rectifier gets warm it ain't making no power it's wasting power um well here's the deal if your rectifier don't get warm you ain't making no power how about that so having a cooling system for your rectifier increases its efficiency so when you're burning a quarter of an amp basically four watts of power to produce another 50 to 100 watts recovery you're in good shape now here's here's my setup there 250 amp because i need it with these back in here we have um 180 amps of solar coming in and that's all the other stuff and you can see there's an additional runaway so if i have too much power and it gets above 14.7 those kick in back over here so the way that it works is you've seen over there your control wires sensing wires or your sensing wires the ones going to the power they come into the controller the controller then sends a signal out and it activates the SSR these controllers pulse up to 35 times a second so it depends they just barely trim it's like snipping it off the top instead of beating the hell out of your power and it trims the incoming power as well as what might be overage in the battery bank and the re it then hits into the diversion load so you'll have it coming up your positive on your SSR will go to your positive on your battery your negative on your SSR for your DC make sure these are DC DC be sure of that look at the link below to a DC DC ones and do not try to max them out only run them at 65% of their ability because there's constant service so you'll come down through here go through your resistors and then back to the ground and that's how that's wired so if you want to look at how that is laid out I'll get rid of this this old Midwestern style destroy your batteries burn your house down controllers with a big old stick and solenoids because these if they fail they fail in the open position they won't burn your house down and there you go guys there is your basic layout follow the lines here let me get real calm here and you take a snip so now if you have a 24 volt system then of course your baseline voltage would double if you have a 48 volt system it'd be four times this so it'd be four times this four times this so this is like your solar setting for 12 volt system this is your wind setting for a 12 volt system you want the solar controllers to be turned off and then you want to start diverting at about 14.6, 14.5, somewhere in that range. And you want that because you don't want the batteries over it. Now, anytime that you want to bulk charge your batteries or you want to service charge or equalize your batteries, you just come in here and you change it, the difference right there, to where they'll do it at 15 volts. But be sure when you equalize batteries that if you have an inverter like this one, this one is a digital style so instead of it having just big square blocks it has a little hip in it um un, uh, turn them off <laughs> so that you don't overvolt them now over here on this setup here pretty simple i'll try to put all parts possible down there for you guys so y'all can see how they how they go together and this one works beautifully uh, this one i think it's almost five years old i guess it's close to five years old until a little war but it's been sitting down there in Baker, Nevada, up in the mountains in a cabin run with a 500-watt turbine like the ones above. So that works good. Simple design. Y'all can go exquisite like this, you know, major design here. But it's the same process. You're going to have your rectified power into your battery. It goes in. You don't put no controller. You do not feed that power through a controller. Go to your battery. Don't worry, it won't overvolt because that's the purpose of this controller. It takes away everything above what the battery is designed to handle in a full charge scenario. And you can adjust them a little less. You can turn your solar down a little less if you're working with different batteries like sealed or gel. But there you go, guys. Pretty simple. I hope this helps. Now, the next video we're going to do is try to show you how to do the brakes. And we're going to actually lay it out. Just like we're doing now. Brake systems, that's both active and direct load brake.